Hey there, it's Mr. Olson. How's it going? So, more work, this is the same as the last work we had. Uh, write down these formulas from memory. You should know all these. Pause the video. Okay, hopefully for cylinder, you said that volume equals pi r squared times height. Area of the circle multiplied by the height of the cylinder. Surface area. 2 pi r squared, that's two circles, one on top, one on bottom, plus 2 pi times radius times height. Area of that circle in the bottom multiplied, or um, circumference of the circle in the bottom multiplied by the height. Cone, volume is pi r squared times height divided by 3. So same as the cylinder, we could go to a single point that's dividing in all three dimensions, so dividing by 3. Surface area, pi r squared, pi times radius squared, plus pi times radius times the slant height. You have two different heights for a cone, the regular height from the bottom to the top, and the slant height going on the diagonal from the bottom to the top. Sphere. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Notice as it divided by 3, just like the cone does, and surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared. Notice that's a 4 just like its area does, or volume does. Also notice that cone, this is kind of half of that one there. And this is a third, so yeah. A lot of have lost in common. Quiz, this was a quiz day video, so make sure that you uh, are ready for the quiz. If you missed this day, you come back and do that, and you do well on it. You can always do retakes, and a lot of people I think are going to want to do retakes on this quiz because it didn't go incredibly well. Got the usual stuff, box tops, bringing box tops, leaving them if you're leaving early. Quizzes, make sure you retake any quizzes that you need to retake. Homework, make sure you get that homework worksheet turned in. Okay, the worksheet, your answers should be in terms of pi, like 40 pi. If you turn in answers like uh, 125.6, that is not the instruction I gave you on that worksheet, and that's not correct. You have to do the worksheet the way it's supposed to be done. Three good things. It's good right now. Um, we're halfway through uh, stage testing for my classes, and that's, that's really nice, you know? Um, halfway there, and then we'll be there the half done in a couple days, and then all my other kids did. So, yeah. This is our uh, last problem we did before doing the quiz. Uh, try out these three, finding the volume and surface area. Pause the video. Okay, so on problem number one, volume, you'd have pi times radius squared, so that's 7 squared, times 9. Uh, if you type that in on the calculator using 3.14 for pi, you get 1,384.74 cubic feet. You will not get full credit on the quiz if you just have the answer. You have to have done the formula here. I need to see that, okay? Surface area. You should have two, you'd have this and this. So 2 pi 7 squared plus 2 pi 7 times 9. Sorry, I do this in the calculator as I go over this with you. And I'm getting 703.36. If there's a mistake on any of these, let me know so that I can uh, mention that in the comments or whatever. Um, yeah, and that's going to be square feet. Announcement! Woo! Teachers and students, just a quick announcement before the end of the day. For jazz band auditions tonight, it is the woodwind section, and that will be after school in the band room. So those interested in trying out for jazz band auditions, woodwinds tonight in the band room after school. Thanks, guys. Have a safe trip home tonight. All right, they give me just enough time to type in this answer here. Here we go. And of course, if you're auditioning for jazz band, woodwinds tonight. Surface area, pi r squared, so pi times seven, pi times four squared. Again, you'll be using 3.14 for pi. On the quiz, if you write it out, 3.14, I don't mind that. I prefer to see you write it out pi. The surface area is exactly equal to pi times uh, four squared times, or pi times four squared plus pi times six times seven, or four times seven. My gosh, I always get rattled by announcements. It throws me off my game a little bit. So, pi times 4 squared plus pi times 4 times 7. Uh, 
138.16 square meters. Make sure you have the units correct, you'll lose points in the quiz for not correct meters, or units. Volume here, 4 thirds pi times 18 cubed. Which is 2,441.6, or 24,416.64 cubic centimeters. Surface area, 4 pi r squared. And that's 4,069.44 centimeters squared. I picked out those numbers specifically because each one has three fours in it somewhere. No, I'm just joking, they happen by coincidence. Okay, next up we're going to be practicing some exponential stuff. 5 to the negative 6. See if you can remember how to simplify out a negative in the exponent. Pause the video. Hopefully it came up with 1 over 5 to the 6. If you came up with anything that has a negative, like negative 5 to the 6, then no. There is no exponent that gives you a negative answer. It makes your answer into an opposite. Remember this is like the opposite, that usually we're multiplying the same thing. Now we're dividing the same thing, so 1 divided by 5 to the 6. Try out these here. Pause the video. And we're back. Here you should have had 1 over 2 to the 13th. And I'll go over this one as well. 1 over parentheses negative 3 to the 15th. Notice that it stays negative there. That didn't change. Negative exponents don't do that. All right? Try out these five here. Pause the video. Okay. Hopefully you got for this one 5 to the positive 7th. This one x to the positive 16th. And this one negative 4 to the positive 9th. Remember, I know I was going to go over every single, every single problem for you, but I'll go over uh, some. So, yeah, went over those ones. Um, I'm going to put a pause to the video for right now because the bell is going to ring in a second and I have a club coming in, but uh, we'll get back to this in a little bit if there's a bit of a shift that the lighting's slightly different. It's usually the biggest shift that you see when I stop my video and restart it an hour later. Um, that's because I had to stop it for the bell. Have a good one. Uh, see you in a second. Hey, I'm back. Now that I think about it, uh, it's not just the lighting that might change. I also could hit the um, mic shift in place if I moved the iPad out of the holder that I use to project. Anyway, scientific notation is the new thing we're going to be doing with this, with our exponent stuff. For this number, 300, mil, 300 million, that's approximately the speed of light. It's actually 299.7 million, I think. Um, that's a really long number to be writing down all the time, especially if you're writing a paper on speed of light that involves speed of light and that speed's coming up a bunch. Which is why we use scientific notation. In scientific notation, what you do is to take the first digit, put a decimal right after that. If you have other numbers, you put them after that. Then you multiply by 10 raised to whatever power brings it up to this. So basically, you look how far is the decimal moving to get from here. So that's eight spaces it moved. So three times 10 to the eighth. See if you can identify what each of these numbers would be in scientific notation. Pause the video. Now you're back. So 20,000, that would be 2 times 10 to the 4th. Now you could, okay, mathematically speaking, it's identical to 20 times 10 to the 3rd or 200 times 10 to the 2nd. But in scientific notation, you only have one digit in front of the decimal place. Here you have two digits or three digits. So those don't work. We'll look at that more closely when we get to uh, more complicated numbers than this. This is just a sort of introduction. 5,000, that would be equal to 5 times 10 to the third. 800, no, 8 million, 8 times 10 to the sixth. Okay. 18, 2 times 10 to the sixth. I'll try these out, change these from scientific notation to standard notation. Okay, so if we got to the sixth, that would be two, and then we move the zero, or the decimal six places, two million. Seven times ten to the fourth, 70,000. Four times ten to the eighth, 400 million. This one, a lot of people are getting wrong, and I know exactly why. It's 5,200. If we move that to 5.2, move the decimal three spaces, one, two, three, and put zeros there, it's 5,200. You do not just add three zeros to the end. That is not how scientific notation works. You're moving the decimal place three times. Try out these ones here. Pause the video. And we're back. 
So this you should get 431,000. Here that should be uh, 327.5. Here 1,562,000. And this one, uh, 8,265.14. And try changing these into sine notification. Pause the video. And a wrap. So this would be 5.28 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th power. This one would be 6.2165. Again, you have to have just one decimal in front of the, or one number in front of the decimal place. Times 10 to the 3rd. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three point eight four one times ten to the seventh. Then this last one here, one point six two nine four eight three. Kind of a ridiculous number different in nation, but whatever. Times ten to the fourth. You have to move it four times. So that's what we did in class. Um, hope that made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.